As we wind down to the end of the lawn and gardening season, fall is a great time to take stock of the progress of your organic lawn. Now in general, I've been quite happy with my lawn here in Maine because there are hardly any weeds and the lawn has stayed nice and green all season, except for this one area where I actually do have a little bit of a weed problem, and the weed is known as plantain. It's a broad-leafed weed, looks a little bit like small hosta, and it's really taken in this low area. You can see it just about everywhere. In this low area, what it, the problem is I don't think I graded the soil very well. Water drains down here and it constantly compacts the soil all year long. Now again, these are the leaves and these are the seed heads of the plantain. And you can see there's a little bit of purple in there and we've had several frosts and the, ultimately it turns to brown. And then these seeds will begin to drop off. So I was really careful to go along and gather up all the seed heads. I just clipped them off by hand. You can also mow them up with a bagger attachment on your mower. When you've got a weed problem like this on an otherwise nice lawn, the obvious question is, what are you going to do about it? Well, remember my Ryle approach to weeds? Relax, identify, listen, and eradicate? Well, the first thing I'm not going to do is to panic. I'm going to relax, and then I'm going to identify. Well, we know that it's a plantain weed. Then I'm going to listen to what the weed is telling me. Well, plantain is one of those weeds that almost always indicates soil compaction. So I need to deal with the soil compaction, otherwise the plantain is going to keep coming back no matter what I do. Well, the best way to deal with soil compaction is to start over, and I'm not quite ready to do that here. I might have to someday, which would mean building the soil up a little bit so it's not so compacted. The other way is to aerate. Now, I've got a core aerator. This is a manual one. And you'll see that it's got these hollow knife-like things. They're about four inches long, and they're fairly sharp. And you see it's hollow on both ends. And you stick this down into the soil, and it takes a core about four inches long of soil and turf. And I'm going to show you how it works. We're just going to drive it into the soil very simply. This is a very simple machine. And you just keep driving it in, and you takes out the cores, and the cores will start to come out the top of the aerator. And I just go along like this. It's not a lot of work. I can do it without my foot or with my foot. I like to use my foot. It's a little bit easier. Well, that should about do it for this small area. Now, when you talk about aerating, you're actually creating air spaces in the soil. That's what these holes do. They allow air and nutrients, water, to get down to the roots and reduce that soil compaction. Think of it as trying to create a sponge. A sponge has holes in it. If you clog up the holes in the sponge, it can't absorb the water. Well, the soil, when it's clogged up, it can't take in the water and the nutrients, and you get the compaction, and then the weeds start to show up. Now, if this seems like a lot of work, and it is, because I'm a little out of breath, as you can tell, there's a mechanical aerator that you can rent. Now, remember I told you there was a mechanical machine that you could rent? Well, I didn't say it was going to be easy. Running a mechanical corator is just about the most difficult lawn care task of the entire year. But if you have a large area like this, it really is the only practical solution. It has a regular motor just like a lawnmower. One tip is to come down here and make sure that you adjust the speed. Now, you've got the turtle and the hare. Well, I like to run it somewhere in the middle. Trust me, if I put it all the way to the hair, I'd be chasing this machine around. And it is actually a very heavy machine. It's a lot harder to run than a lawnmower. Now, you come back here, and you'll see that the cores on this drum do a very nice job. And you can see the cores that they cut out right here, little pieces of soil and turf. And again, for a large area, this is just about the only solution for aeration. Now, when you've done a good job aerating, your lawn should look like a little minefield. In other words, it should look worse before it gets better. You're going to have these cores laying everywhere, and you're going to have holes in the lawn. Well, first of all, leave the cores right where they are. They're simply going to break down and go back in to the lawn and become part of the lawn again. But while the holes are freshly cut, this is a great time to add fertilizer, or to top dress with compost, or to add grass seed. 
to do any kinds of fall lawn maintenance tasks. And I always tell people to aerate in the fall instead of the spring because you're going to have a lot less competition from weed seeds in the fall. There's not too many weed seeds blowing around right now. They've already been collected. So aerate in the fall. Now I've got one bit of good news in an organic lawn care program. Once you've been in the program for two or three years, you should never have to aerate again because the earthworms and the microbes in the soil do all that aeration work for you. That's a really good point on why you should go organic. Now back over here where the weeds are a problem, you might be asking, well, what about the plantain? The aeration isn't going to kill the plantain. It'll probably grow just fine for a while. But by reducing the compaction, you're going to be changing the conditions of the soil so the plantain isn't going to want to grow there. We want to create conditions where grass will grow. One important point in the fall, right after aeration, if you're dealing with a weed problem, is to overseed. So I'm just going to grab my bamboo rake that I have sitting here, just going to show you very quickly how this is done. I'm going to rake this up and get down to the soil as best I can. I'm going to get all of this, any kind of thatch, any kind of dead grass that's been hanging around, just give that a nice thorough raking. And then once you've got this soil exposed like this, and you've got your core aeration, you know, you've got your holes in there, you can simply reach into the grass seed bag and do a small area by hand. And just go along and sprinkle it like this. That's all you need to do. Now, if it's a bigger area, you can use a whirlybird spreader. Now, just get good seed to soil contact. All you really need to do in a small area is just kind of go along with your feet and pack it down. Make sure that that seed stays wet in the fall. And you're probably not going to need to water that much because in the fall we get a lot of rain anyway in most areas of the country. This is going to fill in and the new grass will outcompete the plantain. So I've never sprayed a thing. And within time, by reducing that compaction and planting new grass seed, the plantain will go away and we'll have that nice green lawn over the entire lawn.